Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be installing M3 gauge faces on a regular E90 cluster. First thing you want to do is lower your steering wheel down and out. We're going to come in here with the T10. You got these two screws. Grab it from the top and rock it down. Like so. Turn it. Press down on this tab here. Pull it out. So if you notice this already kind of looks like an M3 cluster, but it's missing the faces. What I did to this is I changed the outer rings here colored the needles and also changed the backlighting to white so I have another video on my channel where I did that conversion and I'll put that in the description but for now let's get this inside and start the conversion process got a t10 to open it up now there's a series of tabs up at the top here and on the side So we're not doing anything to this. Uh, I did that in my other conversion video where I put these outer rings on. And if you notice, I have a couple spare clusters. It was mostly to harvest the glass out of it, but it's gonna come useful today. So I actually colored these needles with a Sharpie. That worked out, but they were a little bit dark, hard to see during the day. And at night they don't really glow vibrant red. So on the M3 cluster, they actually just have red on the back. If you notice, this needle has white on the back. What I tried was a red film on the front of the needle and it makes it a little more vibrant and it should glow relatively bright so i'm going to modify these needles i have the extra set from my other clusters so these are all basically right at the bottom edge here at zero they're zeroed out i may have to install this back on the car once we're done and just see if everything's in the zero position there's no easy way to dial that in to be able to extract these needles, I'm going to put some painter's tape or masking tape on the side. Now we can get our pry tool and take the needle out. Right inside here, there's some tabs that you gotta depress to be able to pull this back cover off. Like so. Now pay attention to this piece here. You can see how that's supposed to sit in there. Kinda stays locked in place, but it may fall out when you remove this. So what you wanna do is just push up on these two tabs here. And then these here. Pull the circuit board out of the way, set it aside. We want to get the gauge face forward. So these these two tabs here, stopping it from going. Like I said, there's that piece there, it's gonna to want to come out. Okay. Grab your gauge face. You can set that aside. Same story here. There's our other gauge face. The, I painted this ring silver in my conversion video, but I wanna show you something. This is fixed. I just basically taped on these two little markers here just so that uh, it would look like a, an M3 cluster and I painted this thing silver, it's normally white in color. So what's going to be pretty neat here is, you know how the M3 has the variable RPM red line? I'm going to mimic that. I'm going to be able to harvest parts from my existing extra clusters and retrofit that. I found a thread where someone did that re relatively recently, so shout out to them, but um, it's possible to retrofit the variable RPM on your existing cluster. So that should make things pretty neat. We're not just changing the gauge faces. But if you notice, the gauge faces are going to be different. They're going to be out of whack. 
this only goes to 160 the new gauge face goes to 200 so we're going to do some custom coating to make everything work to be able to get this out i'm going to flip it over use my pick tool so that pops out if you notice this popped out too but that's no big deal that's normal so i'm kind of done with that i don't need this anymore let me show you why So here's the same setup from a donor cluster. If you notice, it's black because that's how it is stock. So I'll just demonstrate. I'm going to take this out. See that little notch there? So I could put this on here. It's back to stock. This is for your cruise control indicator. It gets driven by this motor here. So what I can do is take this out of here. Take it, flip it, bring it right over here. It snaps in. It's got the exact same relief and motor pass through as if it was ready to be an M3 cluster. Kind of crazy. Put this over here. And here's my variable RPM for my stock cluster. Put this back where it was. So you have to have a spare cluster. You gotta buy a used cluster to do this. But there you go. Variable cruise control, variable RPM. Just to give you an idea, one sec. Just for testing purposes, I mocked this up. So just to give you an idea of what, what's gonna happen here. So I got these on eBay. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, you can check it out at the end of the video. The reason these are made, they look OEM, but someone made it because it, the M logo will light up. So it's an upgrade for M3 clusters. It clearly says on the listing that this is not meant for standard clusters, even though you can make it fit. The reason for that is um, your gauges would be out of whack. This has a 9,000 RPM red line. The stock gauge has an 8,000 RPM red line. But if you lay this over here, it does fit. So when I first was doing this, I thought there's no way that the back plastic is exactly the same in terms of width at the bottom, but it, it, it just so happens that this lines up with the M3 cluster perfectly. And it's a little bit short on the regular cluster. So they're just basically using one part. It's almost like they, when they made the M3, they knew they were gonna do this and they just made one generic uh, gauge cluster housing. So this is gonna go on here to change the look. Since I have so many spare parts here, I'm not going to um, pull it off of here. I'm gonna, I have extra pieces here. So I have this and I have this. I already cleaned this off and pulled off the gauge face, but I want to show you guys what it looks like to pull the gauge face off. So it's relatively easy. It's just adhesive. There you go. That's normal. Those are always there. So that's an extra piece. It wasn't off my original. I, I'm choosing not to modify those just in case I ever need to go back to stock. Very unlikely I ever would, but so there's the gauge face off. Here's the new gauge face, which goes to 200 miles an hour and it's got the different design to it. If you see the outer, this is just lines. Those are dots, circles. To me, that looks a little nicer. So a couple of things you want to do before proceeding. So I'm gonna clean off this adhesive here. Got some alcohol wipes to clean off the surface. If I were to just put this uh, needle on here like that, it may look a little pinkish. And this was actually from the thread where someone showed you how to do the variable uh, red line conversion. Um, they might recommend it that you just take this white spot here. You can notice it's white and let's paint it uh, red with a sharpie we'll color it red that'll just help with the light shining through these are identical there's no difference between them so it doesn't matter which one's which you don't really have to keep track the listing where i got the gauge faces from uh, did show what a stock m3 piece would look like 
So if you can make that out, it's red. That's how they come from the factory to give it the needles more of a reddish look instead of a pink look. The gauge faces come with adhesive that you're supposed to put down onto this. If you did want to set aside your stock gauge faces, you could always just use this adhesive. You could just stick the paper on there, that way you could retain it. I don't really care since I have all these spare parts, but just something to keep in mind. As you can see, the light shines through the M logo, that's why someone made this. All right, so those are converted, as you can see. Now I'm waiting for my soldering iron to warm up so I can pull the solder off this board. You gotta pull this gear off. You can just do it by hand, but you be gentle. We're gonna need that. The two screws to either side are T5s. So it's pretty cool that someone put the effort in to make those gauge faces. There's really no reason for them to exist for the average person. But it was for M3 guys that wanted to take their cluster and make it look like an F80 cluster. Just like that. Just pulls right out. We don't need anything from this anymore. So bring your stock cluster over. Watch the LCD. They're delicate and it can pop off. We have to remove these four balls here. Now turn it over very gently. Watch the display. I'm actually going to put the screws in to hold it. So it's always interesting to see this kind of stuff with parts bin sharing of parts on cars. It's not made by BMW, it's made by Siemens anyway, or VDO. But, you know, BMW submitted their plans to them whenever they were coming up with the E90, saying we're going to need a variable RPM gauge. So then, rather than just make a special board for the 80 or so thousand M3s that will get made. You know, they don't even, they wouldn't even know how many are gonna get made at that point. Um, it's cheaper to just make one cluster that would go on every E90 for, you know, with the provisions there. It's pretty interesting that that's there, that's waiting there, even though that functionality is not gonna be used on the car. They'll make millions of these, whereas just so that the 80,000 or so M3s, I don't know. Economies of scale, it's hard to figure out when and where it makes more sense to do it this way, but I find it interesting. So that's that, there's our retrofit. Let's take our little gear, stick it on. Start putting things back together. So I gotta do a couple things. I gotta paint this silver so I can do this to it. So I'm gonna do that and come back.
So while I wait for the paint to dry, I'm gonna modify these needles. This is a stock, uh, this is a 325 needle that I put the red overlay on. And here's the red Sharpie needle. One is more red, one is more of like a burgundy color and it's hard to see. I want something more vibrant. So I'm gonna do this to the remaining needles. My, if you get a 325 eye spare cluster, it won't have a white coating on the top, only the bottom. Try to get a 325 cluster as your spare. So I'm gonna modify this now. So I'm just gonna put this in the zero position. We may have to take it back off, but I'm gonna put it on really lightly. So there's a couple of reasons why these gauge faces are not listed for a regular cluster. Sure, they fit in, but your calibration is all out of whack. So you'd have to do some custom coding to be able to ensure that this actually falls where it should when you're going a given amount of speed. You don't have to worry about your uh, fuel gauge. That's not gonna change, but there's a couple things. If you're doing this on a regular cluster, not a 335i, your miles per gallon rating would be here, but on a 335i, it does show oil temp. But the range is different, 160 to 340. So that is gonna be out of whack. So, that, so we have to recalibrate and custom code that. So we gotta do the speed, we gotta do this range here, and we have to do the red line, 8,000, 8, 7,000 RPM red line, and it reads 8,000. 8,000's over here, 7,000's over here. It's not gonna read properly as to what speed your engine is at unless we custom code that as well. All right, so I'm done painting that and it looks pretty good. I used some wheel paint, I just had it left over. Just as an FYI, any silver will do really. It's not gonna be that noticeable one way or the other. I have some yellow vinyl for the soft red line. So looking at this here, to figure out where to put those little yellow markings and then the red marking behind it, uh, I put this into position, it just clips in, doesn't matter what position you put it in, you just snap it in, and then rotate it all the way to the left, and then you'll know, put this roughly into position, and you'll know where to stick your yellow markings, here and here. So one goes right here, and then one goes, and the gap between the two yellow markings is the width of this, and then one goes above it. So under normal circumstances, it'll fill up about half around 500 rpm of range you only see a little sliver of it so it doesn't have to be perfect at the edge here now i have some red uh matte looking vinyl tape that i'm going to go all the way around to make it on this something i just noticed uh because I have the newer generation needles on my car, stock. It has a white coating on top. I think they stopped putting white in the middle here and they just relied on this. I was experimenting here, but you may not have the white coating that you're coloring red. You'll just have it clear, but regardless color, red. red. Okay, so I have the tape on there. I'm gonna set it into the cluster now. See how it looks. So we'll snap this into position. So you can see how this is gonna work. It will always go to 4,500 RPM based on how we're gonna program this. So it'll rotate up like this and then it'll come down here when it's fully warmed up. But I'll probably have it so it always stays here. Let's try putting the cover on. All right, so that's the look we're going for. We're gonna put the screws back on the back and go to the car and start programming. I know some guys are gonna say it's rice. Why would you put an M logo on your car? It's not an M, blah, blah, blah. Sure, you know what? If there was an option for one without the M logo, I would have bought that. I'll just put that out there. Is my car way faster than an E90 M3 anyway? Yeah, so hey, maybe I've earned that. Anyway, let's get to coding. Okay, so I'm not gonna be screen capturing for this because I wanna be able to show the gauges. But to get the coding accomplished, we're gonna use a piece of software called Perfect Toolbox. 
made by a guy named Mr. Perfect with a K. Pretty cool that he made this software. First thing I wanna do though is key on and download the combi file. So to be able to use the software, you're gonna to have to set up your laptop to work with Inpa or the usual uh, software suite that I always talk about in my videos. I'll put a link in the description. So you, for it to work, this has to be set up and then you can go ahead and install the perfect toolbox software. So we're gonna hit back, process an ECU, and then combi. I've already backed it up. I'm just showing you what you should do just to be safe. And then read ECU, it pops up your trace file. Like so. And then you would save that as a backup. So I've installed the software. It's called Perfect Toolbox. You can read from the combi module and it'll tell you how everything's set up right now. Very cool. So you can read and then you can, you before you do anything, always back up. So we're gonna say save to PTG file and then you'll save that, I've already done so. That way you have your original programming file in case you screw something up. And let me show you something. If I set this to 100 kilometers per hour, click set. What happens is it puts your gauge cluster in that exact position. And if you notice, it's right on 100. The M3 gauges are pretty um, linear. So they're linear up until this point, up until about 80 miles an hour. They match the 335i gauges. So up to 120 kilometers per hour or around 60 miles per hour, it will be accurate. And then from here on, it will be inaccurate. Your tachometer will be inaccurate right from the get-go. But just as an FYI. So first thing I want to try before anything is activating that gauge sweep. So what we're going to do is go to the warning zone here. Read. It's inactive. I've already saved this, so but I'm going to click. I haven't, I don't know if these are going to be accurate, but I'm going to activate. Click activate right to ECU. There you go. It reset my gauges and you can see that moving down. And then up to 5000. So pretty cool. You can see it working. Let's turn the key off. You can see that drops down. And you see it comes up to 5,000. And if it slowly settles down to, let's see. So it's reading a bit high right now. I want that to drop down a little bit so let me try the offset start position offset let's try 32 steps okay so now by doing that it pushed it over past five and i'm going to turn the key off now and now it drops down that looks good you don't see any of the red when the key is in the off position so i like that i'm happy with that 5000 and if it slowly drops down to the bottom position then that kind of indicates when it's fully warm i'm good with that i'm not going to really play around with the other settings on this i may do a follow-up video or talk about it a little bit more later but for now i'm going to leave those settings all right so we got the red line figured out all i did was take this 4622 number divided by four and then i split up 9000 rpm into four increments now i can show you here if we go to 4000 rpm Hit set. We are right at 4,000. I'm going to change it to 6,000. Right to 6. So we're good. It's accurate. I'm going to reset that. That's figured out. If we were to go to oil temperature, same story here. I divided this out proportionally. Um, this gauge only reads from 120 to 300 instead of 160 to 340. So what I did was I just converted that to Celsius and changed the range. Basically, it was 71 to 171. Now it's 49 to 149. So you got increments of 25 across these four, and then you got the four, you got the steps divided out equally. And since temperature is linear, that will be accurate. My so my RPM is accurate my 
uh, temperature is accurate. Right now I'm going to see the behavior of the warning indicator. Basically, even if it just stays at around 5,000, slowly drops and eventually goes all the way down, that kind of just shows you it's time to push the car. It's warm enough and you'll definitely use this anyway. It's just kind of like a visual thing. It looks cool. Um, now, setting my cruise control. I'm going to put that at 100. This is just all stock values. But if I set that to 100, the red marker is right on 100 or, or close to 60 miles an hour. And it will be accurate all the way up till, let's say if we do 130. If I set 130, it goes there accurately. I'm not going to cruise any higher than that. But for now, I got to do a little more research regarding uh, getting that set up properly. Because there's linear scaling. So the scaling is no longer linear once you get halfway through the RPM range. Something to keep in mind. Um, and there's a special coding in the in your Netodat file if you have an M3 cluster to kind of adjust the scaling proportionally. So right now it's only accurate to about 80 miles per hour, but I want to leave it like that for now so I can drive on it. I'll reset that. Speedometer, if I were to put 130, APH it's accurate but that's about as far as it's accurate it start the scaling is no longer linear on this part that's fine that's going to be functional for me for now I'm not really driving any faster than that and I do have this uh, head-up display that I can always rely on as well as a digital readout here so I always have that for now but anyway I got to get this figured out I'll come back I'm gonna start the car and let it warm up and see how that variable range works during warm-up and then I'll also check out um, what's going to be involved in custom coding the cluster to read accurately past 80 miles an hour. So, so far so good in terms of RPM. That's working accurately. We're going to let the car warm up and see how that gauge behaves and also see the oil temperature come up. May have to drive on it a little bit, but I'm gonna let it warm up for now. So as it barely started to warm up, it did shoot forward a little bit. By about, yeah, it's starting to move by itself here. So it's relatively warm out right now. It's still close to 80 degrees. So it is warming up quickly, but you can see it was dropping. All right, so I took it for a test drive. I floored it a few times. My red line is perfectly the way it should be, it shifts right close to 7,000 when you punch it. My oil temp gauge was spot on and everything was perfect. It, everything was where it should be, just as you'd expect, all the way up to normal driving 80 miles per hour. Okay, so I have figured out my red line. I played around with the numbers until I got it so that at around 4,200 RPM, it will go there cold and then it'll go to 4,500 RPM and then go to 5,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM, and then settle at seven. So this should stay red at all times. So I'll have a true indicated red line, at least that's what I'm hoping for. The red will stop here, and then between uh, 6,500 RPM and 7,000, it will be yellow. That's the goal. I'll show you the settings for that. So we're going to warning zone. I had to kind of just do the math here. You know, everybody's cluster is a little bit different. They, they get calibrated at the factory. So you can't necessarily copy these exact numbers down. But I just did some basic math based on what I had stock. So what I figured out was approximately 22.8 steps were uh, represented per 100 RPM. So I just did the math here. So 4,200, I had it, it was normally at 5,229. I realized that it was sitting at 5,000 RPM, I needed to shift it over. So then I added to that number, and then I did the math here, etc., so that um, it will actually shift over. So it's indicated it fully warmed up at 7,000 RPM, and everything seems fine here. So that should work, that's what I want. We'll do a test drive to see if it stops at 7,000 RPM. That's solved. Now, with the speedometer, um, technically, because this is linear all the way up to 80 miles an hour, it's only here after that you uh, have to modify. So what I read was you're supposed to just change this last value. I had to do some basic math to, to match here, but 340 approximate 
um, and then with the correction 323.7 just to stay in the same range as this so uh, you only have to modify here and then you can uh, have that your maximum steps uh, stay the same you're only modifying this field so this uses it actually I believe it hijacks the tool 32 let's do 336 tool 32 uh, test function so I can set this and it basically just goes right to maximum speed but the thing is this is not an accurate uh, be all end all solution you can't just put in like 200 kilometers per hour and expect it to fall right in line I'm gonna set that to 200 and if you notice it's off but the thing is, the test function doesn't factor in the non-linear scaling. So it, it, tool 32 only uses this last number to use as a scaling. So you can't count on this at all. For instance, if I were to go to 50 kilometers per hour, set, it's reading 40 kilometers per hour. So it seems like, hey, this isn't working and you're kind of screwed, but from what I've read, it's fine in real world you just gotta drive on it to verify so if i'm driving and i'm showing uh 30 miles per hour here and i'm indicating 30 miles per hour here which is right there then i know everything's fine so we'll go verify that on a test drive so that should be that now for the cruise control indicator which would be the little indicator that pops up here uh i had to change this range altogether. So I just copied this from somebody else post. Uh, 0, 10, 50, 120, 330. So you just gotta go to max range here, leave your maximum steps. And I just did some basic math here. It was approximately 62.34 steps in between. And you just add this number. Yeah, so uh, you know, you're gonna have to calculate this yourself. If you happen to have a 335i, you, and your values are similar to what I showed stock then you may be able to just transpose this information but I did some basic math so I kind of just figured out the fact that okay disregard this for instance there's 10 kilometers per hour here 62.34 steps works out to 623 plus the 263 is 886 and then I just basically use the same formula to figure things out so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Uh, we're gonna test drive and verify that my cruise control indicator is indicating properly. For instance, I'm gonna set it at 30 here. Let's just do that, 39 kilometers per hour. And it's reading low. But on a test drive, if I set that, as long as I can set it to like 50 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour and it jumps right to the right spot, we know that. It can't factor in the non-linear scaling of this gauge given that it's a lot tighter on this right hand side here so that's that the speedometer should be accurate now the cruise control should be accurate your warning should be catered toward your exact car which in my case it looks to be around 4200 rpm soft red line and then it will slowly drop down as the car warms up so we'll see I'll, I'll definitely warm the car up and then show you where this ended up. So let's go check that out now. Okay, so I think the way I adjusted things, uh, my yellow marks are at 7,000. I could always shift things up and play around with it, but for now I'm going to leave that. I kind of like it just like that. Um, but I may play around with that. So now let's go for a test drive and see if the speedometer is accurate. Okay, so everything's working fine. 54 on my heads up, 55 on my digital cluster, and it's right bang on 55, and my cruise control indicator is right there with the needle. So all is well, it's perfectly calibrated. All right guys, that's gonna conclude this video, showing you how to convert your gauge cluster to look like an M3, including the dial faces and custom coding and calibration. Hopefully you guys found this video useful or entertaining. Consider subscribing for more content like this I upload regularly.